go to the moon and discontinue and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure like the color go, 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 of our energies and our skills. Because that challenge go, is one go, go, that we're willing go, to accept. Go, 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 one we are go, willing go, to go, 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 and one that we're willing to Hello, everybody. As stated, I am Nathaniel Pettis. We are going to be going over a complete walkthrough from a red team perspective, from fully setting it up to how it works, why it does what it does, and so forth. Uh, this will be a follow along. So if I am going a little too fast, let me know. As of right now, does anybody plan on following along completely and setting this up? That way I can know how to, uh, the speed is which to go at. Um, I will be watching the chat as well. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to let me know. Uh, let's see. All right. So the agenda, we're going to go over um, the definitions of fishing. We're not going to do all of them. They've expanded <laughs> what fishing is uh, significantly. So we're going to go over uh, just what we're doing today. And then we're going to go over the tools that I'll be using. We're going to do the complete walkthrough. And then if you have any questions and answers, we'll uh, go ahead and take care of that. So I am self-trained for a couple of years now. Um, I am currently in my associate's degree at Eastern Florida State. Um, I am a registered private investigator in the state of Florida and Texas, um, and I do side work now, uh, of course, my normal nine to five. Um, I'm a tech for about, I want to say, 11 car dealerships now, and I see that you said you'll try to follow along as well. Great. So that's me. Um, I have three boys and one more boy on the way um, outside of that. It's pretty much gaming. I still game. <laughs> All right, the tools that we'll be using. So a lot of these you guys will know. Some of them you may not. If you have any questions about any of them, please let me know. Gmail will be using. A VPN is not necessary, but something I will go over. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing this from a red team perspective. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, VMware, I will not be using VMware. I will be using VirtualBox, but uh, VMware and VirtualBox are pretty much the same thing. I'll be using Kali Linux. I will be using GoFish. GoFish can be used in Windows as well. I will be using it in Linux. There's no difference in how this is used or how it's ran between the two. There, there, there's no difference anywhere in here between how it's ran between Windows and how it's ran between Linux. The only difference will be when we get down here. Of course, I'll be using Facebook as an example because this is one of the most sought after attack methods when it comes to uh, attacking others. And then I'll be using loophole. Loophole, I will explain a little bit here on as well. So email phishing, as you can see here, my little guy is uh, phishing for passwords and bank information, social security numbers. Excuse the spelling. Uh, that's what happens when you use AI to generate your images. Um, but basically email phishing, this is the most common phishing attack method. This is actually still one of the most common hacks in general. Um, this has become, I mean, I've seen top level security professionals fall victim to phishing. Um, it's basically when you get a link that sends you to a page that looks real. When you log into that a page, it grabs your email address, your password. It sends that information to the attacker and then it'll redirect you if designed properly to the page you expect it to bring you to. Therefore, you kind of get left in the dark. 
You think everything is fine. Everything went through. You go on about your day. Gmail, everybody should know what Gmail is if you're in here. Uh, but once again, I do want to make this for beginners. Gmail is a free email service provider by Google. I'll be using Gmail. I will briefly explain how you'll have to set this up because there are tweaks you will have to do to the Gmail account in order for this to work properly. A VPN um, is a virtual private network. Here goes from their perspective, the six best VPN services of 2021. I just grabbed this image. They are still the top in 2024 when it comes to what you plan on using it for. From a attacker's perspective, we would not be using any of these. The reason being is they are part of U.S. jurisdiction, which means they can be subpoenaed in court. An attacker would not use these if he knows what he's doing. I use one called virtual private uh, private internet access, sorry, right here. Um, they have, I just use them because I trust in them. I've been using them my whole life. They're not expensive and they are not within uh, U.S. jurisdiction, which doesn't matter to me because I'm doing everything ethically, but an attacker would not use uh, most of these. VMware. It's a provider in virtualization. So basically, you can use, for example, I'm in Windows 11. I can create a virtual machine with Kali Linux, which I'll be using, and operate that OS from within my Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer. So you can have multiple, multiple virtual machines, as you can see. I have Forensics. I have Kane. I have... Fedora, I have a Kali, I have all kinds of virtual machines that I use. I'll be using Kali Linux, aka Backtrack. If you were back in the day, if you use this, um, it used to be called Backtrack. And they changed it to Kali Linux. This is a Debian-based Linux distribution. There are multiple different type of Linux operating systems. You do not have to use Kali. This is what I'm familiar with. There are a couple of tweaks that Kali has that I'll briefly explain of why I prefer to use Kali Linux. GoFish, this is the open source phishing framework that we will be using. It is designed for security professionals to conduct phishing campaigns. The benefit to GoFish is the fact that Gmail and other providers, other computers, other software, hardware, whatever it may be, does not recognize this as a threat. That is huge from a company standpoint, because then you get to actually run a phishing campaign on your employees without Google alerting them saying, hey, this is probably a fish, don't click. So we'll be using this tool. Facebook, everybody should definitely be familiar with Loophole, you can get loophole from here. Loophole is a reverse proxy that enables you to expose your local host services to the internet. The reason why this is important is because when we run GoFish, the victim has to be able to access the GoFish server. This is why I'm using Linux because of loophole. I understand how to do this in a Linux environment, not in Windows. Although loophole is available for Windows as well, I'm not familiar with it. So that's why I'll be using Linux today. Later on today, we'll have questions and answers after this. Definitely feel uh, free to uh, ask me any questions you want. There's an either and does not keep it. Correct. Proton VPN, I was actually going to go over as well. I use VP, uh, private internet access on my desktop, but my laptop does have Proton VPN. I love Proton VPN and their email structure as well. But later on, if you guys have questions and answers, uh, we'll go over that as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. <coughs> oh, my crocodile. All right, so I will be using Kali Linux. You can go to, let me see if Google blocks me real quick. Yes, it does. So another good thing <laughs> of um, Proton VPN is Google doesn't mess with it like this, um, whereas Google does stop you with other 
VPNs. So we'll be using DuckDuckGo. So you can get to uh, go to getgofish.com. You will hit download. And if you're using Linux, you can download the Linux version. If you're using Windows, you can download the zip version. Again, there's no difference between the two. So go ahead and download those. One of the benefits of Kali that I prefer is the color coordination. I've messed with a lot of other Linux distribution and they didn't color coordinate. And I love the color coordination and there'll be a couple of reasons why I show you as well. So what I'm doing right now is navigating to the GoFish folder. As you can see, GoFish here is in green. That means I can run it in Python. That means it's active. The, um, the permissions have been changed to allow access to this, whereas the others are gray. That's one of the reasons why I love Cal. I'm going to go ahead and split this. You'll see why here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and start GoFish first. So in order to do that, how did you download it? Did you go to getgofish.com? Yeah, that. sorry. Um, it sent me to a GitHub account when yes. I went there. Yep. So then on the GitHub, if you scroll down, uh -huh. you'll see the download right here. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Yep. No problem. And then it should tell you a little bit. Yeah, definitely read up. I love GitHub. If you guys never been to GitHub, go to GitHub's. All right. <clears throat> so we're here with GoFish. You will need Python installed. Kali Linux should have that already installed. If you dot forward slash GoFish, to start running it for you. When you first start GoFish, they've changed a little bit about it now. Your admin password will be in here. It will say very clear admin password. You will need to copy that password. Your username is admin. Mine doesn't show it because I've already established the password. There's valuable information in here. The admin server is here. I'm going to go ahead and rerun it with it being larger so you can see it better. The admin server is here. That's very important. And then the phishing server is here. This is what the other person, when they click the link, needs access to, which I am hosting it locally. You can host this on things like Amazon AWS, um, Digital Ocean. You can host it live as well online. But once again, the more an attacker exposes their self to online accounts, the more liable they are to being caught. So I am hosting this on my own computer because I don't want to put in a debit card, a credit card to Amazon AWS and then do something like this from a uh, attacker's perspective. So we have GoFish running. That means we can now navigate to the server. You will have to HTTPS and it takes us to this. Now, what I do wanna show you is everything that is happening here, we can see happening on the GoFish server. So when I type in admin, And my password, and I hit sign in, you'll see everything active over here if I type the information in right. I mean, it's still, you still see it move, but. There we go. 
Now here we are in the GoFish um, application. This is where it gets intense. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down real quick so I can make this larger. I'm gonna actually go ahead and full screen as well. My virtual box. All right. So we're actually not gonna start here because this is not where you wanna begin designing from. The web hooks, I won't get into. I don't use them often. The user management, this is just where if you wanna change your password. Account settings, you can change your API keys and so forth. Okay, we'll start here. The send profile. This is what GoFish will use to send out our attacked email. This, if this doesn't work, nothing works. This is the one of the main focuses. So we're gonna go into here. This is my dummy email, my dummy name, but you will need a Gmail account. What has to be changed in the Gmail? You do have to have two-factor authentication turned on. The reason being is Gmail no longer allows third-party apps to use Gmail's login credentials like they used to. This stopped about a year ago. So you have to have two-factor authentication turned on. And then you need this, the app password. Here, you create an app name and it gives you a password that you will input here. Same email, but it generates a password for you. If I deleted this, then my password would no longer work. So that's how Gmail handles now third-party apps. And the only way to get to this page is to have two-factor authentication turned on. There is no other option. You can do other hosts. <clears throat> you can do Proton Mail. You can do Yahoo. Um, I choose Gmail because it's, it's what I'm familiar with. So setting this up, you just have a name. The from does make a difference. It will look like this. This is the example they tell you to set like that. This has failed to work for me multiple times. So um, just having the email work for me. The from field does matter. I'll show you where when we get deeper into it. The host, whichever provider you're using, I'm using Gmail. You need their SMTP. This is Gmail's SMTP that works for outgoing emails. SMTP.gmail.com 587. Username, your email address, your password will be the password that you generated in the apps. You'll have to work with it. It gives it to you in um, four digit combinations. So it kind of gives you the password like, and I believe I deleted these spaces. I'll try it both ways, but you can send a test. So when you send the test, it'll test the email. You'll get an email in your email box. That it went through properly. If you get errors up here, Google the errors, it, it helps. But as you can see, it already went through that fast. It worked, this email is letting you know uh, that your GoFish configurations was successful. So that lets you know that that worked. Once you're done with that, hit save profile and we'll move up to the landing page. The landing page is exactly how it sounds. This is when they click the email, what do you want them to see? 
this is the second most important aspect of a phishing campaign. So I'm doing Facebook. You can import the site, type it in, hit import, and it will import the site. I am not going to share this code um, because this is a code that I specifically edited. If you do Facebook, you will not receive the username and password, the email and password, because of um, JavaScript. The way that Facebook and most websites are now, the JavaScript prevents that. I've went and removed the JavaScript issues that I was having out of this code. So I won't be say, uh, sharing this code uh, just for educational purposes only. Edit it yourself. Um, once you get the code in here, you do want to hit capture submit data, capture password. Credentials are currently not encrypted. This means that the capture passwords are stored in the database in clear text. This is what we want. The redirect to is where you want them to go after they log in. So as you can see, I want them going to the original Facebook page. That way, once they click it, they have no idea of what actually happened. They don't know that their credentials were taken. They don't know anything outside of what I sent them to. That's it. You can edit this in a little bit of different way by looking at the source. So this is the outcome of my page, which I'll show you it live as well. And then if you see things you want to change, like I know for a fact mine has issues, but it's for educational purposes only. I'll show you my issues. I can easily go in here and edit it, but I'm not going to. You can click preview and boom. For example, see how small this is compared to this one? Also, see how when I click in here, the blue field isn't as big as the area? That's another issue, but we'll go over that later. Um, the benefit of GoFish compared to other applications is it's not limited. I can sit here and go to new page, go to gmail.com, import site, Uh, let's see if it'll do the login page. HTTPS gmail.com import site. Give it a second and boom, that easy. Capture data, capture data. HTTPS gmail.com. And we've created now a Gmail landing page. It won't look like this when it's live. This is just because we're looking at it from a source code perspective. It'll look like this when it's actually live, when we save it. So it's that easy. Now, you may have to go in and edit some of the JavaScript and so forth. I, I have not done Gmail, so we'll stick with Facebook. Email template. This is the cream of the crop. This is the, the human manipulation aspect of this. This is where it fails at or you have successfully attack somebody. So the reason why I say that is if this doesn't look legit, then this whole thing doesn't work. So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the meta version and my email, I did a Facebook payment version. So I actually copied this from my own Facebook account, my own email, my own Gmail. So this is a legitimate email because you can import the email and you can copy the raw data out of your email, paste it in here, change the links to point to the landing page. What that means is every single thing that is linked, everything that has a link like this, it will automatically change to your landing page. So when they click it, it automatically goes here. Now, from an attacker's perspective, the problem is when you import your information, it's going to have your information. So if somebody was not paying attention or didn't know what they were doing, 
they are literally going to send out an attack that has their information in it, their first name, their last name, their email. So what you would want to do is you would want to find what the attacker would do is find, for instance, I would have found Nathaniel. And everywhere that said Nathaniel, I would have replaced with a GoFish short code. GoFish has a number of short codes that are used for their email reference. So for instance, when we send out this email, this says, hi, short code, first name. That means whoever's first name we create in this user group right here, which will be next, it will put in their first name and their last name. That's what makes this so huge from a corporation, a corporate perspective. You can literally do 200 employees, have the short code say first name and last name, and it will grab that employee's first name or last name and replace it in this email. That's what separates this from other attacks. So that short code is all through here. First name, last name, first name, last name. That's all through this um, email template. Also, email. That means when this came out to me, it said my first name, last name, and then my email address. Since I replaced it with this email template, or short code, sorry, it's the target's email. So it will replace that, which is down here. So this makes this look legit. As you can see, two, first name, last name, email, first name, last name, email, because that's how it looked from when the email came into me from Facebook. So you'll have to get a little bit into this. You can import it. An attacker would change all of their information so it doesn't show theirs. The last thing we need to set up is the user and groups. What this is, this is who we would send the email to. So, as I told you before, we have a John Doe and we have me, my email my John Doe email, my dummy email. What's insane about this and what I, which I do love, if you have a company, right? Or let's look from a, an attacker's perspective. An attacker would maybe get a Facebook that has a thousand followers, download those contacts from his Facebook information. Um, for example, if you have Facebook through your Yahoo you can go to your Yahoo, go to your contacts, and every Facebook friend that you have, their contact information will be in your Yahoo's contact information, which is insane. But anyways, you can download that, convert it to a CSV template, and you can import all of those. So you don't have to type them in one by one by one by one. Now, if anybody would like to be a part of this demonstration, you can send me your email via the, the Zoom chat and I can add you in so you can see what it looks like, but I'm still gonna show you what it looks like as well. Um, so what you would do is you would do a first name. So let's do Johnny, Mike. Email address, we'll use my same one. And we'll say they're IT. You would hit add. Adds in there. We have somebody willing to give an email. So let's do, we're just going to do, and we'll do CEO. So, this whole group is named Team Glitch. We've added two emails. We'll save it. 
Now the cream of the crop. We are going to create a campaign. New campaign. Everything here is pretty much self-explanatory except for one area. The campaign name, we are going to do Zoom meeting. The email template, we've only created one email template, which was my meta. So it already has it there for you. If you have multiple email templates, you can select multiple of them. We would click, uh, select meta. The landing page, we only have one. I've only created the landing Facebook page. So we would select that. I'm gonna skip this just real quick. This, you can send it by a different date if you want to. And as you can see, you can also send it by a different email sender. So you can spoof emails, you know, they would spoof it and so forth. The sending profile, we've only created uh, my uh, dummy account. And then the groups, we just created the team glitch group. So everything here is done. Here goes your problem. I have looked for this for, I want to say, four months and could not find a solution to this. The reason why this is such an issue is because the outside world needs to be able to access the GoFish server, this, which is hosted on my computer. If we were hosting it in Amazon AWS, if we were hosting it in Digital Droplet, then this would just be the IP address of them. They would give you an IP address to use. We are not. We're hosting it locally, which means they need access to my one two uh, my zero dot zero dot zero, which we went over here. So they would need access to the server itself. So in order to do this, we are going to use loophole. I was so hyped about this because I actually just figured out how to do this um, about a week ago. So we're going to go to loophole, which I had the email link here. I don't know why I said email link. I had the link here. We're going to get the downloads. So if you are using Linux, which I believe I know um, Valentine said he was following along a little bit. If you were using this, you would download it. Here it is usable in Windows, which I saw today. I'm not sure how it looks. I'm not sure of anything of that. Can we see how it looks from a victim side? Usually something is off. Oh yeah, no, once we once we send it, I'm gonna do the, yeah, you'll see it from the victim side as well, absolutely. And I'll show you, that's part of the how not to fall for this. So yep, that'll be within the next couple of minutes, absolutely. Um, and I designed this myself, so it's not gonna look odd. <laughs> um, so to get loophole, you would download loophole, you would unzip it, install it, and then you would get this here. I have my loophole. We can go into there. This is all it is. So we are going to navigate to that folder. So I'm not sure, uh, Valentine, how familiar you are with Linux. So I do apologize with that. Let me try that again. CD will change directory. I put everything on my desktop to make it easier to access. So if you see the desktop, it'll take you to your desktop. LS is going to list everything that's on there. So as you can see, I have my desktop, my GoFish, my loophole, which are these three right here. And then I am changing the directory into loophole. So I'm now in loophole. If I LS, you will see my loophole is green. When you first download it, it will be white. You would need to change the file permissions, which is chmod, 
plus X. And then you would just type in loophole, hit enter, and it will be green, giving you uh, basically a change the permissions to access loophole. So now we will run loophole. Loophole, just like ng rock, needs the um, how you're going to run it. We're going to be running an HTTP. We're going to use port 80. And we're going to hit enter. The first time you run this, it will ask you to sign into your account. All you have to do is it will give you a link. You click the link. It'll take you to Loophole's website. It'll give you a six-digit code. And all you do is put in that code and rerun the commands. As you can see, it's tunneling all of my information from the outside world now. So I need to go back up because... I need this link. This link, as you can see, is pointing to my 127.0.0.1 port 80. So it's created a link that will bring the outside world to my home address, 127, on port 80. So SMTP 587 is only for the email in itself. Sorry, guys, I got this question here. Correct. Yep. SMTP is just for the email, just for how you will be sending this email, not for how they will be accessing the GoFish server. So we took that link. We will paste it in the URL. So this is now given the outside world access to 127.0.0.1 on port 80. We are now going to launch the campaign. Yes, we're sure, campaign scheduled. So as you can see, it's sending to both of these profiles. This will update saying email has been sent. Let's go ahead and drop this down so you guys can see. We can refresh it if we want. And as you can see, the email's already come through. Boom. Um, Valentine, let me know if you got the email as well. It has been sent. <clears throat> so that concludes from the attacker's perspective. So now we're going to switch and we're going to look at this from a victim. The victim got an email. As you can see, there are a couple things that you can change. The me part. The reason why this says me <laughs> is because Gmail recognizes yep, that I'm sending, sending profile from this email address. Therefore, it says me. So it won't say that when you're not sending it to yourself. You have all the information here of the email. Hi, Johnny. Remember, because we said that this person here, name was Johnny, Johnny Mike. We've told the landing page to, um, I'm sorry, the email template to fill in first name, last name. Hey, Johnny, an admin has made updates to your payment account, Johnny Mike. You can view or make changes to your account. So this is the benefit of changing those links. Every single link navigates back to the exact same thing, even if they kicked unsubscribe. So let's go ahead and say, oh my God, I, I didn't do this. We need, to, we need to go in and check on this. There you go. <clears throat> so... Somebody asked, Valentine asked, can we take a look at the normal Facebook compared to the one I've designed? Well, here you go, guys. There is no difference. Not that you're going to notice. Um, yes, the link will show different. You're talking about in the email? 
the link is going to show, I'm assuming you're referring to the fact that, and that's a good catch, actually. Very, very good attention to detail on that one. I'm assuming you're referring to when we ran this campaign, the link that I put in here looks different. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over that. Yep, we'll, we'll go over that as well. There's, a, there's a definitely a reason for it. So we'll go over that. So as you can see, there is no difference that you would notice. So let's go ahead and continue on real quick, and then we'll go over the questions and answers. So let's type in the email address. Oh, and Valentine, feel free to do it and don't put in your real password, okay? Password, let's do password, one, two, three, four, five, pound, 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 login. Now, as you can see, it has redirected me to the real Facebook page. What's funny and, and odd about this as well is if you're already signed into Facebook, your browser will grab your cookies and just log you back in. So you really truly think nothing's happened. Let's go back to our campaign. Oh, look at there. We have two emails sent, two emails open, two links clicked, one submitted data. So, so far, Valentine and myself have clicked the email, have opened the email, and I've submitted the data. Oh, Valentine has now submitted data. So, both of these have fell victim to our phishing attack. Let's scroll through. None of this really matters. We, uh, From an attacker's perspective, if they're phishing, Chrome and all that, it is irrelevant to them. Now, if I was looking to exploit the computer itself, maybe you have an outdated version of Chrome or an outdated version of Windows. Yes, it'll matter then. But we need to now look at here. There's his email and there's his password. All this other stuff doesn't matter. This is, this is coding and so forth. It doesn't matter. Let's go check mine. Email. Password. Now, from an attack perspective, my goal is to get to Facebook, put in the email, put in the password, log in, have a dummy email ready, change the email, change the phone number, and now you no longer have access to your account. I have worked for a social media company that I can't say that I've worked for before, um, but it has a blue logo. Um, they don't care that your account got hacked. You have to take in within your own precautions to protect your own account. So now we're going to go over how to look for things. Take about five minutes, very easy. Things that everybody should look for when you're clicking links. First and foremost, hover. I tell everybody, everybody always says, oh, well, look for the something that's spelt wrong. Look for something that doesn't look right. My website has nothing spelt wrong. Nothing. It looks exactly like Facebook. The only noticeable thing is this changes. And that's only because I'm using a different font. If I ran this font through Google, it would tell me the font. The other thing is that I noticed that I'm just now noticing this information is darker. It's darker. See my font, how Facebook's font is lighter? That's noticeable. Their field, my field is a little bit longer than theirs. That's most likely because of my font. That's easy with an HTML BR break. The biggest noticeable thing for me is when I type in Facebook, Notice that there, when I click in here, their area stays gray. Mine turns blue. I actually think that would be a benefit to me. People would probably think, oh, yeah, that's Facebook. Facebook is blue. The other noticeable thing that I was having a problem with and I didn't care to edit is when I click in password, notice it's the exact same um, area with. When you click mine, see how small this bracket is? That's nothing but a coding issue that I can go in and edit. So I just don't really care to do that. So rule one, hover. 
before you click. If you hover over your links down here at the bottom left-hand corner, it'll tell you where it's going. As you can see, that's not taking me to Facebook. That's taking me to my loophole server. It's not going to Facebook. Rule number one, hover. Rule number two, look at the URL. Everybody always says, look at the URL first. I don't believe that because the URL is Gmail right now. You can't see the URL once you click here. And clicking here, even if you don't sign in, can compromise your, your, your information, even though I haven't signed in. And if anybody cares, with, once we have questions and answers, I can show you why and what I mean by that. So even navigating to this website and not clicking nothing has severely compromised me. So hover first, look at the URL, make sure it's going where you expect it to go. Number two, now we look at the URL. Notice this says facebook.com. This does not. So back in the day, question if anybody wants to try to answer it real quick. I don't want to take up too much time. What do you think will happen without cheating and navigating to it if I go to facebook.com without the E? Without navigating to it, what do you think will happen? Or what if I go to Facebook with one O? What do you think will happen? A phishing site, right? <clears throat> I got that answer, a phishing site. That's what most people think. And that's what used to happen. Guess what happens now? Takes you to the real Facebook page. Facebook bought every domain that looks close to theirs that way attackers can't create fake facebook pages that a user wouldn't realize an e is missing so they bought everything that almost looks related to facebook which is smart what about a pay code attack i don't think all email clients have fixed this style attack so hovering doesn't work if a victim click, um, you are correct. You you are correct about that. But but here goes the thing about that. You're talking about you're talking about a legit like somebody who's done their work, done their research, and if they're attacking you with that, they they would have to be attacking you for a specific reason, not a phishing attack. That's you know, we call that a a, a spearfish or a whale a whale attack. So spear phishing is, is a specific target. Um, so yeah, you're talking about somebody that has an advanced knowledge and they're not looking at students at Eastern Florida State. <laughs> Question, if a victim clicks the link and has a password manager such as Chrome that auto-populates, will the fish still be able to pull info from the auto-populated? That is a very good question and I am not 100% sure. I think it would. I think it would because it's still in the password field. The password managers are more for physical and um, so, uh, shoulder surfing. I think it would still grab the information. That is a very good question, though. Um, rule three, two-factor authentication, guys. I hate it. It's aggravating. If my phone dies, I can't get into half my accounts. But two-factor authentication prevents all of this period. When I say that, is there a way to bypass two-factor authentication? Yes. If somebody has the skill set to bypass two-factor authentication, they are not targeting your Facebook account because they think you cheated on them or they have a friend that knows somebody. That is not just something that happens. It, 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 can, be, it can be done, yes. It's not the easiest thing to do. Um, a little extra fun that I wanted to show you in 30 seconds. A lot of people think that this is okay. Never walk away from your computer like this, guys. Yes, you can hit the eye to see it, but This is just a part of phishing. It's the only reason why I'm going over it real quick. I don't even know if, let's do one of mine. No I, if you walk away from your computer like this, I 
I can still see that password. So asterisk is not safe. That's just a part of phishing I just wanted to point out as well. A lot of people are not aware of that. Even without the I, that password can be seen. <clears throat> so this is a complete walkthrough of phishing, how to prevent it, how to stop it the best you can. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I am open to questions.